Shaw from Central Nervous Systems, and today we talk about accounting and MISIS. We will discuss uh, the accounting programs that MISIS integrates with, uh, the inventory costing methods that uh, MISIS can be set up to use. We'll talk about uh, general ledger accounts and period ends, uh, account sets, and uh, exchange rates uh, that can be set up to use uh, for purchase orders made in currency other than your home currency. And lastly, we'll go over uh, purchase order invoicing. So a purchase order invoice that we get from a vendor and uh, transacting that through. Okay, let's uh, start. Uh, MISIS integrates with uh, a number of uh, popular uh, accounting programs. And these include uh, QuickBooks, uh, Sage 50, both US and in Canada and Sage 300. So uh, each one of those MISIS will connect through natively and uh, interact with. For inventory uh, costing, MISIS has four inventory costing uh, methods that it can uh, be set up to use. Uh, so we have these here, standard costing, average costing, uh, FIFO, which is first in, first out, and LIFO, last in, first out. Um, <clears throat> so each one of these uh, can be set up and your inventory will be costed uh, that way. Um, if you use standard costing, uh, it allows you to have labor and overhead absorption. Uh, if that is something that you require, uh, it works very well with MISIS if it's set up uh, properly. Most people use uh, average or FIFO. Um, and uh, the odd one uh, may be using uh, last and first out, but uh, generally the first three are the ones that uh, uh, people use uh, for their costing. Next, we're gonna talk about uh, our GL. So MISIS does not have its own general ledger. Uh, it uses the general ledger of the accounting program it connects to. So. What we see here is 18 accounts that uh, MISIS uh, by default will need uh, to post to. And, and these accounts here are actually uh, accounts from my accounting program that are linked to in here. So these aren't separate accounts that MISIS has. These are the same accounts that you'll find on your, on your balance sheet uh, income statement uh, on your accounting program and they're linked here. So what does MISIS do? When are you transacting MISIS? It takes the transactions and holds the dollar value uh, in journal entries for each uh, of the transactions uh, according to the account that it belongs to. And it will just hold that there and until um, it is transferred across using a thing called a period end. We'll come back and talk about period end. So one of the beauties of this is that you don't have to reconcile um, between MISIS and um, your accounting program because in the end, we're pushing everything across uh, to, um, to the accounting program. So there's no uh, sub-ledger that you have to tie into your uh, financial statements, which is useful because you try to avoid as much regulation as possible. You, the transactions that you uh, push across um, in the period end, and we'll just get that to that uh, shortly here, you can send full detail. So uh, every transaction, every journal entry will go across, uh, or you can consolidate by date, by fiscal period, or by uh, account. Generally, uh, most people will do full because they want to see the full uh, transactions coming across. Uh, on the rare case where there's so many of them that you want to uh, declutter your GL, uh, you may want to consolidate, but for the most part, uh, uh, having uh, no consolidation will be the most useful for you. So, mentioned period end a couple of times, uh, and I also mentioned that MISIS doesn't have its uh, own GL or or, um, uh, or a, a acts like a sub-ledger uh, for your accounting. Your period end is what you use to post the transactions that uh, MISIS was holding and post those through to your um, accounting program such that uh, once they get posted, then your 
balance sheet, your income statement, your trial balance becomes um, much more meaningful and becomes live. Uh, this is a term that I use because uh, so without these transactions, uh, looking at those financial statements um, uh, would be uh, uh, pointless because we have so much transactions that need to be posted. So this is uh, what I've got in my system right now and shows uh, uh, transactions for my inventory account, 1320. And here's a whole bunch of transactions that have yet to be posted uh, to my accounting program. <clears throat> Once I'm ready to post, I press the post button and it then will uh, push those transactions into my accounting program, again, making my uh, financials whole. So I've, we, we've seen GL accounts and we saw 18 standard accounts uh, and we pushed those across. Now, what if we've got situations uh, where uh, we need um, certain transactions to go against certain GL accounts? Uh, uh, if we reach a certain threshold or um, a certain type of transaction. So let's uh, take into account uh, an example here. Uh, I've got uh, engineering, they go in and grab some inventory for R&D and uh, I need to scrap that, uh, um, that inventory because we no longer have that because it's been taken away. Um, but I also want, want to capture that cost as a, as a finance lead uh, against the uh, inventory uh, expense, uh, sorry, the engineering uh, expense accounts because I want to be able to track how the cost that engineering is uh, um, uh, using up for for inventory. So in order to do that, uh, MySys has this wonderful thing called uh, account sets that allow us to go in and uh, uh, adjust uh, um, certain transactions uh, by using account sets, by using jobs uh, to bypass the default um, accounts that we saw earlier and push those to uh, specific accounts that we want. So again, that opens up um, a way of uh, getting uh, those costs for inventory. Uh, another example of this could be, uh, I want my finished goods uh, in a separate GL account than my uh, raw materials. And, and so uh, by setting up a, uh, an account set for finished goods, we can apply that to all finished goods items. And so when the finished goods are created in MISIS, instead of going into the a regular inventory asset uh, account, it's going to go into its own account and uh, hold there. Um, so in MISIS, you could have the inventory showing up, but on the financial side, when we look at our balance sheet, we'll, we will see dollars flowing into our finished goods uh, GL account as well uh, to denote the amount that is uh, valued for our finished goods. So very useful uh, when we need to do things like that. MySys has the ability to uh, purchase in uh, foreign currency. So if you've got a vendor up in Canada, in Europe, uh, Asia, that is using a different currency than your home currency, um, MySys allows you to be able to uh, transact with those uh, vendors and uh, uh, issue POs in their um, native or preferred uh, currency. And yet uh, MISIS and, and the valuation will be exchanged through into your home currency. So in my case, it's US dollars. And, and so if I issue um, a PO in, in Canadian dollars, uh, it will do the exchange rate and put the valuation for uh, for my inventory that I'm bringing in in US dollars, which is uh, again very handy, allows us to use the system globally without having to do uh, manual journal entries or uh, adjustments to valuation on my inventory. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is on the purchasing side. Um, so there's a video uh, out there for. Uh, for purchasing and uh, go over uh, the. Uh, features of uh, purchasing in MISIS. And one of the things we talk about is uh, PO invoicing. Um, so uh, that's on there, but it also talks about um, the, the purchasing process. I want to go over that uh, PO invoicing because this is uh, something that uh, is very important for the finance side, uh, accounts payable, and how do we deal with uh, paying a vendor 
uh, invoice uh, on a purchase order that we've issued out of MISIS and uh, what impact does it have on, on finance staff. So one of the things that uh, with the integration with uh, the accounting program, uh, MISIS um, handles the invoicing for uh, for purchase orders. So the vendor invoice comes in after purchase order has been received, you actually enter it in MISIS. Uh, remember one thing with MISIS is that you can receive uh, your inventory in before uh, the actual invoice comes in. Uh, a lot of uh, programs um, like QuickBooks, you can't do that. Uh, you you put in your um, your invoice and that brings in your inventory into the system. Here, uh, you can bring in your inventory without uh, uh, having the invoice and then apply the invoice later. Uh, it will create an accrual for you for goods received not, uh, not invoiced and then we'll clear that once you invoice it. So let's uh, look at uh, with a little bit of detail uh, what that looks like um, and explain what this means. So I've got a PO here. I've um, got quantity ordered and I've got quantity received. So I fully received, nothing left uh, to be received, but notice that uh, I've not fully invoiced everything. So I've got uh, some amounts there to be to be invoiced. So again, instead of going to your accounting program to create your invoice, you've got to come into MISIS to do so. And MISIS will then create the uh, payable uh, in the accounting program and have it ready for you to cut checks for. So if I'm, I'm going to go into the invoicing uh, section here, notice that it's pulled up my uh, vendor um, and has gone into the accounting program and pulled up the uh, supplier terms uh, that I have set up uh, for this vendor. 90 days net is my uh, net terms, and so it automatically puts in my um, my di uh, due date for for this invoice uh, through. Going to come across and I'm going to put the uh, invoice number in there, and then I'm going to just select uh, the items that are on the invoice. So, what does that uh, do for me? It shows me my quantity and it shows me a quantity that's remaining to be invoiced based on what's been received. Um, so this is this is key for an accounting clerk uh, who's uh, inputting this information because now you don't have to take a whole bunch of uh, uh, paper and do some math and figure out, okay, uh, have we invoiced everything? What's been invoiced, what's been not? The system will tell you. It will tell you the quantity that's left to be invoiced um, and the amount uh, that it relates to. Now. You may have two invoices that relate to to the amount that's left over. You can you can come in and change the quantity and make it less and, and invoice it based on what you got. What you're not going to do is if you've got uh, quantity more. So for example, I've got two uh, remaining to be invoiced here, but the vendor sends me an invoice and it shows me three on there. And so at that point, the AP clerk is going to look at that and say, no, that doesn't match what I've got. Go back to your buyer and say. Um, We've been invoiced for three, um, but we've only have two left uh, uh, received. So we've either made a mistake and not received enough, or the vendors made a mistake and they invoiced that for, uh, for too much. And so go and fix that uh, either by receiving extra or having the uh, vendor amend their invoice, and then we're good with quantity. Same thing with the price. Uh, the price here is listed based on the uh, value that's uh, on the purchase order. So I'm going to come in here and change this to a different number. Um, and then same thing, I'm going to go to my buyer uh, if it doesn't match uh, and say, hey, I've got, a, I've got an issue. So before posting, make sure that uh, that has been uh, approved and once approved, um, make the change. So we have two choices here. If I make the change here, it's going to go into purchase price variance. Uh, the difference is going to go there. Uh, if uh, I don't want to make the change here and I want that to go into the cost of uh, the the item, which uh, the I-02, then I would have to unreceive uh, for two uh, units, uh, change the price, and then re-receive it for the correct price. So then it would show up uh, here because our inventory uh, will be valued based on, uh, on the price that was uh, there at the time of the receiving. Um, now, that may or may not be possible because the inventory may already be used uh, uh, by the time the uh, the in, uh, the invoice comes through for processing. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Uh, my invoice has $800, uh, so I'm I'm good, and I'm gonna uh, um, 
push the button and what this is going to do is, as I mentioned before, it could create invoice one, two, three, four, five for uh, Dunwoody Wire in my accounting program. So let's go see that happen. Okay, so I get uh, a warning and it tells me um, invoice one, two, three, four, five has already been used for this vendor and uh, then I need to go back and, and uh, um, put in a new invoice number or um, do some checks. So one of the good things about uh, this is uh, if someone had gone into the accounting program and inputted this uh, manually, manually there instead of coming through MISIS, um, this would stop us from having a, a duplicate invoice uh, in the system and paying the same invoice twice uh, to the vendor, which we don't want to do. Um, so in this case, um, I made a mistake and actually one, two, three, eight, five. And so now I've got this uh, in place and let's try that again. Wonderful. Notice uh, this is now um, quantities uh, have gone to zero. Uh, it tells me that that has been posted. If I close this and check my invoice quantities, now they match up. So I've now posted that that invoice one two three eight five, and that's sitting in the accounting program, ready to uh, to pay. Now, <clears throat> one last thing to talk about here is. Uh, the transactions, so the journal entry transactions that we've uh, been making, um, you can look it up in MISIS uh, really easily. So uh, MISIS has a good history. Um, and so in this case here, I'm gonna go to the history tab for the purchase order, but it could be on the inventory side, could be on uh, the manufacturing side. Uh, same thing uh, has a history tab. So here's my invoice that I just posted. And if I hover over the date, click on the drill, and go into it. Here's my journal entry that's uh, showing up. Here's my journal entry um, for the transaction that I've made and the amount that's gone into uh, purchase price variance is showing up there. I've got my document uh, 12385 um, and showing that um, as the admin, uh, I'm the one that posted it uh, and it's um, invoice PO as a, uh, as a type for purchase order number 10. Uh, notice also the status says uh, not posted to GL. Once I do a period end, this will change to post it to GL. Okay, so let's review what we talked about um, in this video. I can MISIS integrates with uh, the different uh, inventory costing methods that uh, MISIS uses. We talked about uh, the default GL accounts. Uh, talked about account sets that would uh, then go away from the defaults, um, thing called period end and, and pushing transactions across to um, to the accounting program. We talk about uh, exchange rates and handling uh, purchase orders uh, to, uh, to different countries. And uh, lastly, we just talked about the um, vendor uh, um, invoices, uh, processing that through MISIS to create uh, our payables in, um, in the accounting program. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you've got any questions, reach out to us uh, and look forward to uh, seeing you again for another uh, video on MICE. Thank you.